morning boys and girls welcome to another week of fun learning so um today is may 4th and if you're a star wars fan like miss Bowden, may the 4th be with you um today is going to be kind of an easy day for reading because we're not going to be doing much discussion of our um ready gen book that we're going to read <clears throat> we're going to do a few phonic skills and review some verbs but um, we're going to just introduce you to the story today, and then tomorrow we're going to kind of go more in depth with each of the countries to learn about them and um, start to compare and contrast um, some similarities and differences between these students that we read about in these countries. So um, let's go ahead and get started reading our story. I'm going to go ahead and turn the computer and come sit on the other side so we can see our story together and read it. Okay, our story is called One Classroom, Many Cultures. Peek inside a store. Take a look at a park. Watch busy sidewalks. You will see many different people shopping, playing, and going places. Some are tall and others are short. Some have curly hair and others have straight hair. Some are young, others are old. The United States is a nation of many people. Some of them may have families that have lived here for hundreds of years. Some of them may have families that moved here from other countries not long ago. These people live in the same neighborhoods. The parents work together. The children go to school together. Let's meet the students in Mr. Tucker's first grade class. They have things in common. They study reading. They study math. They paint pictures and play games. Many of them are the same age. When something funny happens, they laugh. The students are also different in some ways. Some have blonde hair, others have black or red hair. Some are tall, others are short. Their families have come from different places with different cultures. Let's meet six of them. This is Alma. Her family is Cherokee. The Cherokees are Native Americans. They have lived on the land that is the United States since before European settlers came. Ama is a Cherokee name. It means water. Ama loves to swim, so it is a good name for her. Ama's parents often prepare traditional Cherokee foods. These include onions, eggs, watercress, crawdads, fry bread, and hominy. Hominy is a food made from corn kernels. Ama's mother is a potter. She makes beautiful pots and bowls with Cherokee designs. She is teaching Ama how to make pots and bowls too. Ama's family takes part in the Cherokee National Holiday. It is held once a year. Cherokee people from all over the country go to Oklahoma. They play traditional games such as Cherokee marbles. They share Cherokee foods. Ama's mother sells her bowls and pots. This is Raul. His family came to the United States from Mexico. In Raul's home, the family speaks both English and Spanish. Their house is their casa. Raul has a pet dog or perro. Raul thinks it is cool to know two languages. Some of Raul's favorite foods are Mexican. His mother makes corn tortillas by hand. Raul and his father fill the tortillas with black beans, cheese, and beef for a tasty meal. Raul's family celebrates Mexican Independence Day. On September 16, 1810, 
Mexicans began their fight for freedom from Spain. Now on September 16th, Raul's family takes part in a fiesta with others from Mexico. There is dancing, music, and fireworks. It is a happy time. This is Britta. Her family came to the United States from Sweden. Britta's family likes foods from many cultures. Britta loves pizza best. However, once a week, Britta's parents fix a traditional Swedish meal. They have smoked salmon or meatballs with potatoes, but they always have bread pudding for dessert. Britta's name means strong. She loves to dance. When she dances, she feels happy and strong. She enjoys Swedish polska music. This music is fast and lively. It is usually played on a fiddle. People in Sweden have a celebration in June. It is called Midsummer. Britta's great grandmother used to live in Sweden. She remembers gathering flowers to wear in her hair for midsummer. She remembers dancing around a pole and eating strawberries. Now she fixes flowers for Britta's hair each June to remember midsummer. The family eats fresh summer strawberries. This is Joseph. He and his brother Charles came to the United States from Kenya. Joseph was only three years old then. They live with Joseph's aunt and uncle. Joseph's aunt serves Kenyan foods. One of Joseph's favorites is fish stew. He also likes coconut rice. The family follows Kenyan customs of dinner to at dinner time. The family eats with their right hands only. Fruits and sweets are served for dessert. Joseph loves to run. Many of the world's fastest marathon runners come from Kenya. Joseph races Charles around the park several times. They are so fast they look like blurs passing by. Joseph's uncle plays a Kenyan drum. It is made of hollow wood covered in cowhide. Sometimes at night, the family gets together to dance while Joseph, Joseph's uncle plays. It reminds them of their homeland. Joseph misses Kenya sometimes. Still, he is happy to be in the United States. This is Mayu. Her family came to the United States from Japan. Mayu's family follows some Japanese traditions at home. They take off their shoes and put on slippers as they enter the house. Mayu's family members bow to one another to show respect. They sit on the floor at a low table when they eat. Mayu and her family often dine on Japanese foods. Two of Mayu's favorites are shrimp and rice. The family serves food on several small dishes, not one big plate. The family uses chopsticks instead of forks. They enjoy tea in the afternoon. The family often gathers to relax and sip tea together. Mayu loves to draw and paint. Sometimes she creates her own cartoon characters. Other times, she paints traditional pictures of bamboo, waves, flowers, or mountains. This is Suhi. His family moved to the United States from Mongolia a year ago. He is still learning to speak English. His friends in the class help him. Suhi had a horse when he lived in Mongolia. There were many horses there. Someday, Suhi would like another horse. He is an excellent rider. The family keeps many Mongolian traditions. Suhi does not walk in front of older people because it is considered rude. Suhi's family always holds the cups by the bottom when they have a drink. When they give or receive a gift, they make sure their sleeves are rolled down first. Most of the time, Suhi's family speaks Mongolian at home. If Suhi wants an apple, he will ask for an alim. If he wants potatoes, he will ask for Tomis. Every student in Mr. Tucker's class has a family from a different culture. They share with each other. They learn from each other. Together, they make a wonderful class. 
Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that story as much as I did reading it. We would have read this in our class. Um, anyway, when if we would have still been in school and we would have done um, just about the same activities that we're gonna be doing today online. So I just wanted to kind of read it to you. I'm gonna send this PDF to mommy and daddy so you have it. You can also access this story um, on Moodle. I have assigned it to all the students so you can have it read to you on there or you can read it yourself. Um, but this book talks about a first grade class where they have all these students from all over the world. Their families come from all over the world. And usually most of the time, all of our families do come from all over the world. So um, last year I had a very diverse class where I had students' families from many different places. And um, they shared their different cultures with the class on different things that they like to eat at home or um, celebrate different holidays like they do in this story. So think about maybe where your family came from because we all live in the United States, but the United States wasn't discovered till way, till way later than most of the places where people lived. So um, most of our families, we migrated to the United States. We, we were called immigrants and we came to the United States um, to live in the land of the free. And so a lot of our families come from different backgrounds. So what I would like for you to do today is to think of where your family might have come from. Maybe talk to mommy and daddy about your family history. Think of some um, traditions that you do as your family that others may not. Like, for example, Miss Bowden's mommy, her family came from Sicily, Italy. And so um, usually at Thanksgiving time, we have a big Sicilian, a big Italian Thanksgiving where we do have the turkey and the ham to eat, but our main dish is a homemade Sicilian spaghetti. And that's our big dish that we usually do. So um, that's on the Italian side of the family. And then my, my dad, he um, is, his, his daddy was French. They were some of the Cajun French that came down from, um, Canada and came down into Louisiana um, that lived in Marksville. And then um, his mama, my grandmother, came from Germany. And so um, I'm still learning about where at in Germany they came from. But Miss Bowden's a good mixture of Italian, French, and German. So um, there are different things that we, we do. When Miss Bowden was um, in France a couple of years ago when I backpacked through Europe, I went to Marseille because that's where um, on a cool website, the ancestry.com, you can backtrack your family and try to find um, where they came from and learn different um, links towards your family so you can um, have a, a long history of a family tree. And I um, was able to link up with some relatives I didn't know I had in Baton Rouge and they did some research and um, my dad's family, his name was Lewis, and that was a big family name that dated back to the 1600s. So when I was, went to Marseille, France, I um, tried to go to the courthouse to go see if I had any family members over there to introduce myself. But unfortunately, it was lunchtime and the courthouse was closed. And um, Miss Bowden was in shorts and tank tops um, because it was a super hot day. But um, so I didn't have the right clothing on. But um, the next time I go, I'm definitely gonna go make sure that I'm, um, I have my shoulders covered and maybe a skirt on so I can go into these places and um, research more of my family history because it's super interesting. So that's what I want you to do today for reading is talk to your mommy and daddy and um, kind of find out about your family history and where your background is and where you guys have come from. Because um, then when we truly break down each of these characters, because let's see, we had one, two, three, four, five, six. We learned about six different cultures today. When we break down those and we start to compare and contrast those cultures, um, you can always share your culture with us and compare and contrast because um, and compare and contrast your culture to one of these students because our writing for this week is going to be uh, opinion pieces um, talking about maybe where else we would like to go visit based off the cultures that we learn. So um, I'll be back with your 
writing, not writing, your language practice and your um, your um, phonics practice uh, for writing. If you want, you can write down your culture today. Um, like the, anything that you find out from mommy and daddy, maybe write down your background history and share it with us. Uh, where does your family come from or what traditions do you guys usually do or have that relate to that culture? And so throughout the week, we'll learn about different cultures once we really focus in on some of these students, okay? All right, I'll see you guys for phonics and um, language next, and then we'll wrap it up with our math video. Have a good day.